It's time for another Dice Tower Review from Gamer's Remorse. Hello and welcome back to Gamer's Remorse. Today we're taking a look at the Game Crafter game, Zooforia. Check it out on the Game Crafter. There's bears. And lions. Tigers. Oh, oh my. my. Zooforia is a worker placement set collection strategy game for two to six players and takes between an hour and an hour and a half to play. Guess what? The old zoo curator is thinking about retiring and is looking for his replacement. Can you create the best exhibit? Can you hire the best employees and keep the animals most healthy? Can you shovel the most? Well, let's not get carried away. At the beginning of the game, each player is given a round tracker sheet, five animals, three employees, and three workers to place on the board. The game begins with each player drawing a new animal that they have the option of putting in their exhibit. If a player wants the animal but has no room, they have to discard one of their other animals. Now, any player gets to pick up three dice at the top of the game board. That player rolls them and then determines which dice to place where. One die must go to food, another to the viruses, and finally another to the trash. Finally, players take turns placing workers on the game board. The game board is made up of several locations of import. We've already discussed the food, virus, and trash. Each of these locations on the game board either earns some level of removal of viruses or trash, or earns you additional food to feed your animals. Also, there are spots on the game board for, for acquiring more employees, buildings, or animals. Each player has room for five animals, four employees, and buildings. On the lower left, there are two spots for the best exhibit. These locations are like bonus points that only help for that round. The first player gets extra two points, while the second player gets an extra one point for the round. On the mid-right, there are three spots above three die locations. These spots allow a player to be immune from the daily event. The daily events range from super helpful to bloody awful. And then finally on the lower right was the day of the week chart. This is purely used to indicate how many rounds the game needs to go for. To the left of that is the first player marker. Players can take the first player marker by putting a worker here. Otherwise, the first player changes each turn going clockwise amongst the players. After all player selections have been made, it is time to collect the workers. Buildings, employees, and new animals are placed in front of each player, and older cards are discarded. It is probably important to note at this time that some buildings and workers carry with them the distinction of being stackable. This means that although they have to maybe prove to be weak themselves, a savvy player can stack many of the weak employees to make a heck of an awesome single employee location. All items in a stack must have the same icon on the card. Office workers, veterinarians, directors, security, they all need their own stack. It's often wise to double down on what kind of workers you want based on what they provide. Some provide popularity, denoted by the orange man icon. Some provide food, denoted by what I call the coffee cup, although it looks like a bag of food. And some provide vaccination to cure viruses. The others clean up trash. After all cards have been placed and discarded, the daily event shows. A player rolls all three dice on the right side of the board. The sum is referenced against the daily event chart, and voila! A happily horrible awesome event occurs. Maybe a mishap in the lizard exhibit happens. All lizard exhibits are closed, or maybe trash is reduced for the day. But odds are, it's going to be something awful. In the next phase, it's time to make sure your habitat is maintained. Collect food and feed your animals. If you don't have enough food for one of your animals, the exhibit is closed. Collect the viruses, minus any vet abilities, and apply the viruses to your animals. It's important to note that some animals have a special resilience against viruses. I'm talking about you, alligator. If any animals are over their threshold of viruses, the exhibit is closed. And finally, collect trash, minus any groundskeeping bonuses. Finally, take any special bonus actions from your animals, if they have them. And at last, score visitors. Earn those delicious victory points from your exhibits. Each employee and animal has a little orange icon that determines how popular they are. For each visitor point, you must move your scoring marker one space up. After that, it is rinse and repeat, seven times to be exact. Don't worry, it goes quicker than you think. Wait, didn't I say something about set collection? Oh yeah, at the very end of the game, all animals in the exhibit currently get a special bonus points if they match in some facet. There is indigenous location, cold or warm environment, or animal classifications. That means mammals, lizards, birds, etc. Two points are given to the player with the most of each of these categories. And at the end of the game, the round scores and set collection bonus points are added up, and the winner is the player with the highest score. 
Each player starts out with a random set of five animals and a predefined set of three employees. We're going to set up the board and put six random animals out there. Three buildings. And then one of you would go, and, and five, five employees. employees. Eric. I was counting cards. You're cheating? Yeah. Anyone else not surprised? Anyone? Gosh. All right. <laughs> so the player with the lowest total point starts. Oh. One, two, not three, four, five, six. That makes sense. Six. What do you have? Seven, eight, eight nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you go first. I actually feel bad for you, because how are you going to feed all those? <laughs> we each get an animal to start an off with. Let's replace my jaguar with a bearded dragon. Because who doesn't like beards and dragons? So we roll these three die that represent the virus trash and food. That you all, you want to mix them all together. That makes it taste better. And then I get to choose where they go. I vote four for food. Mm -hmm. I don't know which to put where. Oh, you did it wrong! Oh, man. Should we don't get away. No, oh, man. All right, take turns. Placing tokens for daily selections. We take our cards now. Okay. And we get rid of the old cards. Yep. We roll the die of fate. Thirteen. Thanks, buddy. Rambles are closed. Hey, look, all of my stuff closes. <laughs> That's a lie. I get to keep one of them open. All right, take points for main attraction. No one went there. Determine first player for the next day. No one went there. So, so that would allocate the so Brian. rotate. We'll go to Brian. Collect food slash feed animals. So we each get four. Close unfed animals. All of mine are fed. All of mine are fed. Mine too. Collect viruses, place viruses. So we each get three. I get one. negative two, so I really gain one. I think we each gain one. Yep. Um, wow, my guys are really weak. All the way around. Okay. And what happens next? Collect yeah, trash. Abilities. Oh, yeah, yeah collect trash. trash. So we each get three minus one is two. 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 Okay, so we need that. Score visitors. So... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I get six. You are yellow. Eric? Nine. I would have had eleven. Hey. All right. So that has Not been my problem. <laughs> that has been one <laughs> round. No problems. That's true. That has been one round of Zooforia. Let's fast forward a bit and see what happens. All right. Now we are at the end of the game, and it is time to sum up the score. So we have already collected all of our. Uh, and the popularity we, points. We lose due to virus and, and trash. All right, so I lose four points. Two for virus, two for trash. Four, six, one, two, three, four. I lose 13 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Total four minus. One, two, three, four. Okay. And you gain two for food surplus. Well, I guess you gain one. One. So you gain one point for each two. So one. And now we do the sets. So the first up is how many mammal sets does everyone have? I have two. One. Okay, so Brian gets two. How many sets of lizard animals do people have? I have three. I have two. One. So Sean gets two. Okay. How many sets of birds does everyone get? Zero. I have two. One. Okay. How many sets of spiders does everyone have? One. Zero. Six. Whoa! Oh. All right. One, two. Spider-Man. Uh, I didn't realize what I was saying. All right, uh, endangered species. Two. Two. One, three, two. I'm sorry. Bengal tiger. So, two for that. Uh, sunny weather animals. Five. Four. Five. Did it no one gets it. Uh, Africa. Three. Zero. No. So, Brian gets two. Okay. Uh, Asia. Five. One. Two. Okay. Uh, South America? One. Zero. One. So no one gets it. North America. Zero. Zero. It's just one Two. and you get it. I have, no, I have three. Okay. Three. One. Two. All right. Australia. I have two. Zero. Three. One. Two. And cold weather. I have one. Three. None. All right, that is game.
Now it's time we're going to review Zooforia on the Gamer's Remorse. Uh, Brian, what do you think of this game? Yeah, um, the game was interesting for me. Um, I was intrigued by it, looking at the images of the game, knowing the theme of the game. Uh, I was curious before opening, so that led me to uh, look at different things in different ways. And I'll explain that as we hit those points. Uh, so for visuals between zero and two, I give that a one and a half. Uh, the visuals were pretty good, uh, except you could tell that a lot of them came from similar sources, but I did not like how the animals were photorealistic and nothing else was. Uh, I would have thought it would have been a lot cooler if everything was cartoonish, everything was 3D, or everything was photorealistic. Uh, so I did knock it a bit for that, but other than that, everything was laid out well. I also knocked it a bit for the font size. Um, but that didn't impact me as much as I thought it would. Um, as the game played out, it got to the point where, oh, well, I can ignore the flavor text unless I want to read it in front of me. It doesn't matter up there. And the abilities, as we're putting the cards out, we can read them and figure out what's what. Um, so that didn't impact me as much as I thought it would. Skill look, zero and one, I give that 0.75. I thought it was balanced very well. There's a lot of die rolling, but that impacts everybody. Um, and then you take that into account in your placements. So you know you have to roll the effect die, but you have the option to become effect immune. Um, so there is the way that those two interact I thought was very amusing and very uh, interesting and new to me. Uh, pacing zero to two, I give that a 1.25. The problem with the game and the pacing is that it went a little too long and there are almost too many options, but as the game progressed and like the more we played it, the turns got a lot. Every time you play it, however, with a new person, it will take them a while to figure out what is what and where to go for the best options. Demon Immersion 0 to 2, I give that one and a half. I thought it was really cool the way you were running the zoo, and I thought it worked well between the different aspects of what you had to run it. I thought it was cool the way the different things interacted, and I really liked the effect of dice. Um, I thought that was kind of an interesting way to add how the zoo alters based on various things. Um, it's kind of almost a climate-esque thing in the zoos. Um, Mechanics 0 to 1, I give that a 0.5. Again, the effect dice were really cool. I liked the way that you had the three die and the tallied up to a wide variety of outcomes. I liked the difference of rolling the three die for the food, viruses, and trash, and how that would then be allocated by the player, and then you would choose based on those things. Again, something that you don't see very often in worker placement non-deck, hand management, I guess, essentially. Um, and then it wasn't fun, zero to two, I gave that one and a half. I, I found it very enjoyable up until the last couple turns. I feel it could have ended a few turns quicker, maybe five turns or so. Um, but I did enjoy the game. It's a game that um, I would break it out at multiple game days. I probably would play it multiple times in one game day, but I would play it at multiple game days. Um, I wish Sean, what were your thoughts? Uh, overall, I think I agree with almost everything that Brian said. Um, so I'm not going to expand on it much more other than the fact that when I went into this game, I kind of saw some similarities between Zularetto and Agricola, and that kind of panned out what it ended up being. Uh, there's a little bit of room for probably uh, refining some of the aspects to make it go quicker. Maybe there aren't as many steps in the turn order that tend to bog things down and gum it up, but overall it was, it was a really fun game, so I think you'll see that in my rubric. Uh, All right, quality of components, zero to two. I give it a 1.5. As Brian said, it would have been nice to see either all photorealistic or all 3D cartoon. Um, good balance of skill to luck, zero to one. Uh, I actually gave it one. There's a lot of room for uh, strategy here, which is really cool to see. And that makes sense. If its parents are Zularetto and Agricola, you're going to have innate strategy in this game. Uh, downtime, 0 to 1. I gave it 0. 0.5. As Brian said, there were too many rounds. Uh, I could use some tightening up. It just seemed to go on a little bit longer than what I would have liked to see this game. It's a 60 to 90 minute game. It would have been nice to have it maybe down to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. And that might be asking a bit much. I know they have an entire week in here, but do you really need a whole week? Maybe it's just a weekend game. Make an express version. That's probably more portable and more people would be inclined to play it in that 45 minute window. Uh, theme, 0 to 2, I gave it 1.5. I felt like a zoo curator. I'm hiring people, you know, to, to help out with odd jobs. I'm getting animals. I'm opening up exhibits. I'm going to do a reptile exhibit so I can pack more animals in there. That sounds bad. So I can have more uh, animals on display, let's say. So I, it kind of made sense. It, it resonated with me. Thrill, competitive, uh, I gave it 0 to 2. Um, or no, I'm sorry. For 0 to 2, I gave it 1. There's a bit of king making. Uh, this is... You know, we played it a few times, and I ended up way ahead 
Um, and it seems like once you get out ahead, there's no catching up because I've I've stacked up you know these characters that just add on, uh, you know that yeah that aspect of the game. So that was on that was kind of unfortunate to see. It'd be nice to have like a rubber band effect. Maybe I get slowed down. Maybe maybe one of my exhibits gets closed because it's too popular. So I'm generating more trash. Something in that thematic element uh, would have been nice. Uh, was it fun? One to two. I gave it one point five. I really did enjoy this game. Um, other than the a little bit of uh, analysis paralysis and the length of the game, it played really well and and uh, I, yeah, I have no complaints there in regards to the mechanics. So overall, I gave it a seven. I like this game, as Brian said. I would play this maybe once in a night. More than that, due to the time length, I would really question it. So Eric, what do you think? Uh, I'm I'm newer to worker placement groups or groups games, uh, so. Uh, it was a little difficult kind of going in. Uh, um, the appeal for me, probably, uh, I'd, I'd give it about a three and a half out of five. Uh, it, it looked interesting, it sounded interesting. Uh, to me, it just sounded like a zoo tycoon board game, essentially. Uh, and uh, the, the, the character cards kind of, it looked like it was pretty much taken right out of zoo tycoon, uh, the, uh, the cartoony look. Um, but, uh, the uh, replayability, however, for me was lower uh, at a 2.5. Uh, it was fun at, at you know the first couple of turns trying to figure out what you were going to do, and then it just drug on. So uh, it, it's definitely uh, a, a game that I, I would play, but uh, there are other uh, worker placement uh, games that I would uh, rather play instead. That's fair. What did you give it? Uh, six. Six. All right. So seven, seven, six. So six point seven for Zooforia. Check it out at the Game Crafter. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you later. If you tune in the internet, what is this internet you speak of? I invented it. It's a series of tubes. Oh, I didn't go with that. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.